Steve Welsh is at the court for us in Greater Manchester. The court heard how Farak Nizar's nickname was Mr Lucky, but in June this year, when he tried to con an elderly lady out of her £1 million lottery win, there was no luck involved. Sentencing him to 30 months in jail, the judge told Farak Nazar he'd committed a calculated act which breached the trust of a vulnerable old lady. Amy Welch in Greater Manchester for us there. Good morning. Here are the daybreak headlines in the Granada region. The police watchdog is appealing for witnesses after a partially sighted man was shot in the back with a taser gun in Chorley. A Lancashire police officer tasered Colin Farmer after mistaking his white stick for a samurai sword. That's all the news from us so far. I'll be back in an hour. First, though, it's back to Lorraine and Alid. Bye for now. The funeral will take place later of a Lancashire football coach killed in New York. Mike Jones from Tarleton was stabbed to death in Manhattan earlier this month. The 25-year-old worked as a youth coach for New York Red Bulls. A music single to raise money for the Hillsborough families is being released in time for Christmas. Amy Welch has been looking at the new recommendations and, Amy, controversial suggestions or are these actually now a case of caring for those who are suffering? Well, it's certainly an issue that divides opinion and here in the Midlands, campaigners battling to get the law changed say that fight has gone on for long enough. Amy Welch joins us now from Preston Crown Court. Amy. She killed her little girl and then tried to kill herself. 35-year-old Dawn Makin sobbed as she arrived at Preston Crown Court this morning in the wheelchair she's now confined to after stabbing her daughter, four-year-old Chloe Burke, to death. For the latest, let's join our reporter, Amy Welsh. Amy. Well, it's been described as one of the biggest days of industrial action in more than 30 years. And here at the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham, you can see why. Thousands of people marched through the city centre earlier and were met here by members of the TUC. The government says they simply can't afford to carry on funding public state pensions. We're not terrorists. We're not terrorists. He denied he was a terrorist and promised nothing but peace. We live here in harmony with the, civic, with the British people. But just and two years after holding this news the conference, the these were the scenes in Stoke-on-Trent. 12 months on, it's hard to believe that these streets were the focus of one of the largest anti-terror operations Stoke-on-Trent has ever seen. But why did four men, all followers of Islam, want to bring terror to the very city they'd made their home? Our reporter Amy Welch has more. A man walks past and points a gun. A second, hooded and hidden from view, is close behind. The first comes back into shot. He draws a hand grenade from his pocket and throws it at a house in Droylston. These are the men police believe are shown in this CCTV. Greater Manchester Police say as far as they're aware, this is the only grenade attack they've ever dealt with. They don't know if Anthony Wilkinson and Dale Cregan still have access to grenades. And police say while they don't believe the pair are a direct threat to the public, they shouldn't under any circumstance be approached. Well, in the past hour, friends and family have been laying flowers here at the spot where 15-year-old Thomas Barton tragically lost his life. He was meant to be enjoying the sunshine, but 15-year-old Tom Barton's afternoon swim ended in tragedy. Jordan McDonnell was the last person to see Tom alive. Um, they ran out of breath and stuff and got on the fishing part in the middle and like, started to get the breath back, so I swam under. Amy, sadly, this isn't the first time this has happened in Lancashire in similar circumstances. That's right, in July last year, 13-year-old Dylan Ramsey drowned while swimming in a quarry in Whittle Woods. His mother has since launched a campaign trying to stop young people swimming in open water. And when I spoke to Thomas's father earlier, he said if any good can come of this, it's to stop other young people taking the same risks that Thomas did. at Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, where a mother from our region is about to set off on the mission of a lifetime in memory of her son. As she takes her first step, she knows he's watching down, driving her to succeed. He would be here with us. He would absolutely love this. It's the start of the rainy season here on Mount Kilimanjaro and after just an hour's walking, we've already been hit by our first torrential downpour. It's still hot and humid, but the ground's now muddy and slippy. It's only from 500 feet in the air that you can see the true scale of the landscape fire.
firefighters are dealing with. A simple flame can travel up the hill faster than we can run. And if the conditions are right, this entire area could be destroyed in as little as 24 hours. Amy, how long is it going to take them to change all those clocks? Well, that's a very good question. This clock manufacturer designs and makes a quarter of a million clocks every single year and sells them around the world. In their showroom alone, they have 400 clocks on display, so you can imagine why it's not their favourite time of year. Well, Chloe Reed is co-owner here. Chloe, this is a lot of clocks. So it's a mammoth task for Chloe and for the rest of the team here. Well, I don't know about you, but it's something which catches me out every single year. So just remember that it's forward, not back for those brighter evenings.